boy Drake's house. Looking for State Street. Alright, so this is phase one of the whole trip. This phase, we're going to be going uh, to my friend Drake's house, spending the night there, and then getting out early in the morning to ride to Lebanon, Kansas. So from Lebanon, we're gonna be uh, from Lebanon, Kansas. We're gonna be going to rugby. Now we have to complete this within the daylight hours, within the actual, um, which I think the daylight starts at like five something in the morning, and the summer solstice ends um, around I think ten. 12 or something like that at night. So you have to complete it within like a 16 hour span, so to speak. And uh, we're gonna do it probably in about 13, 14 hours, I think. And this is with riding at my pace without worrying about um, riding with anybody. I'm gonna be doing it alone this year. So usually when I ride alone, I, I'm pretty fast without going fast. I just have a very consistent riding style. And um, I like to maintain speed. That's my thing. You know, not this whole speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down shebang. So I should be good on that aspect. Well, engine fan's on. Okay, guys, so we're going to go to Drake's house, and I'll see you guys in the morning. <laughs> oh, oh, it's likewise. Thank you, thank you. Right. I appreciate it. Be careful. Do you have any questions for us? Mm, no. Where'd you come from? I'm just glad it's nice and uh, no, clear no, no, right now, at least. You know. okay, well, I just came from Manhattan. Did you come last year? Were you here last year? Did you do the Yes, I was. Yeah. My lady was with me last year, but she's busy with work because of the when the COVID thing happened. She got backed up, and then yeah. now she's just slam, slam, yeah. slam. So she's like, she'll get it next year. So. We hope so. Thank you for being yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Right, I plan on coming every time. Bye-bye. Thanks. Take it easy. We got 174 miles before I build up. Let's see how many gallons we get. All right, guys. So we got about three and a half gallons of fuel with that stock. It's not too bad. It's a four-gallon tank. And uh, after you fill up four gallons, you can squeeze in an extra 
200 milliliters or something like that. So that's really not that bad, actually. It's got like 49 miles to the gallon. So, all right, we're continuing the trip. Two years ago, there was a big flood and uh, this bridge right here got got knocked over by the debris that from, this, from the overflow of this. So they're rebuilding this bridge right now and this is the uh, product that it looks like right now. Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Jake back. Okay, so I just filled this thing up again, right? We did the second fuel stop. I got the exact. I'm gonna screenshot it. So check it out. We're gonna look at look over to the right there. I got exactly the same range, the same miles per gallon with the last two fill-ups. That is crazy guys. Because I don't have cruise control. I got a throttle locker and that's about it. So we're over here in uh, South Dakota right now. I just left out a Corsica, like the Chevrolet Corsica, the, you know, the old school car. I just left Corsica, um, South Dakota. It's a pretty nice day, actually. I thought I was going to be dealing with rain the entire time, and I have not been dealing with rain the entire time. I have, let's see, let's see, let's see, one, two. I have two more. I'm, we might fill up one more time and then that's it everybody's so nice out here everybody's saying hi so yeah we might actually fill up just one more time so i was basically able to do this entire ride with three tanks with three fill ups and i did not start this ride full i had to ride about uh, about 81 miles to get to the starting point and so and that's how i started this ride and yeah it's not too bad guys not too bad this ride here if i haven't if you guys haven't heard before this is the smack dab s-m-a-s-m-a-c-k like you smacking somebody smack smack dab 2020 i won't put too much on here i'll, I'll tell you guys to just go on ahead and i'll put the link below to their actual website so you guys can check it out if you guys enter this type of stuff you know taking these long rides and um this is not necessarily a long ride, but it's a challenge because you put yourself through a challenge where you have from the very break of dawn, basically you have to ride from dawn till dusk within, you know, you have to complete this ride before, uh, after dawn and, and complete it before dusk, which is pretty cool because when you finish in Rugby, North Dakota, you're about roughly say about 50 miles from the canadian border so if you guys wanted to actually ride into canada after this ride you can now i think the canadian border is closed right now so as this ride right here i will not be going into canada shucks but next year probably will be going into canada where into canada by winnipeg because i would say that's about the closest city in canada to the border from where rugby north dakota is so about to be checking out Winnipeg next year so for this year we're just gonna go up to Lebanon into um from Lebanon to rugby I'm gonna hang out I'm just gonna relax a little bit I'm gonna put some of this video together uh, I'll plan on getting more b-roll if I haven't shown it yet I don't know how the I don't know the, the format in which I'm gonna show this video but we're gonna do it in three parts because we're riding the whole entire length today and then tomorrow we're going to do half of it. You know, going back home, we're going to do half the ride home and then finish the rest of Monday. So that's what we're working with. The weather's been pretty good, surprisingly. Like I said, I was expecting to be in and out of rain the entire time, but that is not the case. So 
I'll take what I can get, guys, because you see me, I'm all weatherproofed up, man. I got these weatherproof gloves, which, by the way, the name is, uh... My bad, these have high pour materials, but these are uh, fly racing gloves. They keep your hands warm. So my temperatures, which is another um, good thing to mention, has been 66, well, it's about 63 degrees. Between 63 and 70 degrees is what's been my temp temperatures. But, anywho, um, hold on, let me see if I can show you guys what I'm looking at. All right, guys, so we start to conclude this part one here. I'm coming up on Rugby, North Dakota, uh, probably in about two miles, I'd say, no, about a mile. So today's ride was, you know, only done this one time. So last year I ran into a real, real heavy thunderstorm, like real heavy lightning, low visibility, all that good stuff, heavy winds, heavy rain. Rain was coming out of crosswind with the heavy winds. Uh, it was it was pretty bad. This is the first day of summer, which is the longest day of the year. And something about driving up north, the weather gets real crappy. It seems to be consistent. I think the people who've done this, because they've been doing this since, um, hmm, don't quote me on when they start to do this ride in particular. Since they've been doing this ride, um, it's been pretty crap, you know, the weather. So, um, it may have never been any times where they've had actually good weather riding up here, which would be kind of difficult because, you know, going from north to south is, um, you're almost bound to run through some type of weather. So, uh, this time around, I ran a little bit into a little bit of rain, ran out of it. It wasn't too bad. I had my um, frog talk. I'm going to go over the gear that I have for this ride. Uh, go over it with you guys so you guys can see what I have. And I can tell you exactly what worked because I am bone dry right now, which is a pretty, pretty good deal. So um, we're going to go over here to the monument. I'm going to take my pictures. And we should be good to go, guys. We should be good to go. It's time to find some food around here. Everything around here closes early. They, they stay open a little later to accommodate us riders who's doing this ride. But other than that, there really isn't much going on here. There's a family dollar. There's like two or three gas stations. And here's me. <laughs> so let's see here. If you guys are interested, just hit me up. You can hit me up on Snapchat, J on the Segway. Hit me up on YouTube, J on the Segway. And, um... I might be the first one here. Anyways. 
It is 4.29 in the afternoon. I started around 6 a.m., so got here in pretty good, decent time, actually. You guys want to see the monument? Give me a second. All right, guys, so here we are at the monument, the center of North America. <clears throat> we started this morning at the center of the United States. They have this little billboard, this little board here with all this little information. You guys can pause it to read it all. Hopefully I got it good. And so this is just it. It's nice and simple. Nothing fancy. We're good with this guy. Okay. I haven't calculated how long we've taken to, to do this ride, but um, It's probably about nine hours or something like that. It's pretty crazy. Anyways, I'm gonna go check into the hotel and grab something. And I'll see you guys later. Overview of what happened today. All right, laters. All right guys, so this is the end of the first episode slash day one, um, or the official day one. Did I definitely just see two dudes kiss? I'm pretty sure I did, but anyways, um, it's the hotel with the hotel room windows over there. So let's talk about some gear. I got a couple of notes here to go over with you guys. So I want to talk about the gear that I've used. So I use these fly, uh, these Hypora, Hypora, H-I-P-O-R-A. Um, fly gloves these are waterproof gloves now this does not have armor these aren't armored gloves but they are padded um, you know I, I guess it helps with impact so you got basically the glove right and it's like a liner built into the glove you can't take it out it's, it's all built in um, the temperatures I were riding I was riding in uh, what was it 60 between 60 and 82 degrees now the thing about that was it rained on me as you guys see in the video yeah, I was getting my butt rained on and uh, so you know that kind of cools things off you know as far as your gear goes it'll kind of cool you off these gloves held up well my hands were completely dry in this thing these gloves I will make a, disc a disclaimer it was very damp out when I started riding this morning if it is very damp out and your hands, you know, the condensation from the dampness in the air sticks to your hands and you put your hands in these gloves, your hands are going to be damp. So just keep that in mind. If you put dry hands in these gloves, your hands are going to stay dry the whole time. Like, I, I, I don't see these not working when it's like 40, 30 degrees. Now, mind you guys, I've completed, it was 742 miles in nine hours and 45 minutes or was it 10 hours and 45 no it was nine hours and 45 minutes no 10 45 um and i had these gloves on the entire time and they kept my hands warm and i say that because when you look at temperatures between 60 and i think they went up as like far as high as like 84 degrees but that was until the end of the ride when you're looking at temperatures in the 60s and it's very damp out and my put, I put damp hands in these gloves. My hands should technically be cold. Um, I have, I am kind of warm-ish. I'm one of those people who's usually warm, but I have good body regulation, uh, body temperature temperature regulation. So even though I'm usually warm, I do get cold too. That didn't happen with these gloves. Okay, now the GoPros. I was using the Hero 7 for all the parts where it was raining. That was the straight up Hero 7 without being in a special case. Uh, now you guys are watching me on the Hero 8 black with the media mod wrapped around it. I wanted to use the microphone from the Cena, but, um, and I got to use it a few times, but um, didn't get to use it as often because of rain. You know, the media mod isn't water resistant, so. I had to kind of stick with the Hero 7 for the most part. And then when it was dry, we went on to the Media 8. Uh, 
<laughs> the Hero 8, sorry. For boots and everything, I just used regular water with, uh, waterproof boots, like work boots. You know, I have riding shoes, but they're strictly um, almost like summer, spring, and fall shoes. So they got the holes in them everywhere to keep your feet cool. And I just knew that that wouldn't be the right shoe for this ride. There's just too much chances of rain and stuff like that. So didn't want to deal with that, having wet feet. I was completely dry, guys. You see all that heavy rain that I was dealing with? Uh, never got wet. I used frog togs. Where did I get them from? I got them from I got them from a sporting goods store. You can probably get them from Dick's, but they're Academy Academy Sport Goods. I think is what it's called. Uh, they had the top and the bottom. I only bought the top, but I already had the bottom. So um, something you want to look for when you guys are buying frog togs, right? If you want the best waterproofing that they have available, this is the outside of the jacket, right? This is the inside, of, of course, right? You see this here? This is what makes it waterproof. How they have the whole stitching covered up on the inside. You know, it's completely covered all the way around on the inside. I don't know if you guys can see it. But it's this stuff right here, this stuff right here. That's what makes these frog talks so good. And then it's breathable. I was still feeling the air blowing inside of my, uh, inside of this coat here. And you know, while it was raining and I didn't get wet at all. Not even damp, guys. So that's pretty cool. Now, I wore my riding jacket. I have an Icon um, riding jacket, like a summer one, a straight mesh, but still have the elbow protection, the shoulders, the back protection. Uh, I rode that under this, right? Same thing with the pants. I had the, uh, the Frog Talk pants on, the waterproof pants, and I rode my um, Ironworks padded pants under that one also. So, um, that all worked pretty well for me. Part two, I'm trying to put together part two right now for this video. Part two is gonna be, like I said, maybe halfway home, maybe three quarters of the way home. I guess it just depends. Hope you guys enjoy part one. We're gonna hit you off with part two uh, shortly, okay? Wish me luck in finding some places to check out to give you guys to see, and uh, yeah, peace.